a little bit more more porno action from the lines than we thought we would. <laughs> Two humps. Yeah. Uh, that looks quick off the bat, so I'd say that. Anyway, uh, we are now, everyone else is crowded around the lines, so we can uh, down to the pan. The light is looking perfect, and I think we can get some nice shots. Some nice shots. Uh, some spring bookies down there. Yeah. And a few build of this around. Yeah. We're just savouring our last night out on the Playa Reserve camp, and then we're going to be three nights back at Mabua. Um, and then we'll have one more night here at the Fiki campsite. So hopefully we'll still see the lions once more, maybe a couple of days. Depending we'll still drive through, through here and maybe in one of the evenings. Yeah. yeah. Depending on the lions movement, but um, they yeah. just don't really get to Mabua, so because yeah. there's no water holes in Mabua, they hang around here and then they go to Long Shlong or Lut. I don't know how to pronounce the name of that pen. Long Shlong or something like that. Yeah. Um, long schlong. Long schlong, yeah, and they pretty much hang out between the two. It's a beautiful evening and we're just loving being here and it's yeah, the grass, the grass is just ridiculous. Planning his next meal. So the jackals like to hang around the water holes because they can catch the doves when they come in to drink in the evenings here and the sand grass in the evening in the mornings. So you can see how many doves are here. So they all fly in and they wait for a safe time and then they fly off again. The circus there, he's roaming in the background. Now we're wondering if the Khalakhari was kif. Check it out. Damn it, that was amazing. Got it, the jackal on film. <laughs> From a very windy Rapaya Reserve. So we're packing up and heading back to Mabura. And this is what we found underneath our tent. The biggest bloody shunga loli. Put him in Man, that's massive. <laughs> 
Yeah. Look how many else others are all here. Small guys. Are you, where are you going, guys? You ain't coming. You ain't catching a lift with us. Are these the Shongololo babies, Liam? Is it the Shongololo that's out? Is it the Shongololo babies, these ones? Well, they would have been someone's babies. Maybe it's your babies. Maybe we need to move the babies with you. I don't think they all migrate together as a family unit. You don't? <laughs> So we're back on Mabua 1 for the next three nights. Pretty much got five nights or so left in Botswana. Um, it's pretty damn windy today, it's pretty miserable. Lots of cloud cover, which brings a bit of a relief from the heat. So brings so this is the not so fun side of camping. Having to put up with a tent blowing all over the place. No sunlight for the solar panels, which means that we have to plug the car in a bit just to keep the fridge and batteries charged. Maybe we'll get some rain later, but hopefully the wind will buzz off because this is really worse than a windy campsite. This is all worth all the wind. Never been so close to a crimson breasted trout. Little pair bouncing around here. Very, very cute. How's it? We are just taking a moment to overlook the Mabua pan. Um, the weather has gone from windy to a gentle stillness with some rain. It's epic. It's absolutely kiff. Um, so this is our view. We've got these beautiful cloud formations happening and this gentle drizzle coming down. It's quiet. Geki's in the background. Geki. Uh, we've got a wildebeest and about 12, maybe a bit less springbok over there. Yeah, quite beautiful to watch the storm sort of come in. We decided to camp a bit further back on Mabua 1 this time round. Um, so we were camped there originally, which was like at the end of the viewpoint. And now we've just camped a little bit further back. Last night it absolutely chucked down with rain. The storm came in at like, just as we went to bed and pretty much rained until two or three o'clock in the morning. It's quite lovely. And the day yesterday was just windy the whole day. It had such shit weather. Um, so I shouldn't say shit, I mean, it's, at least we're still in the Kalahari. So yeah, the solar struggled a little bit yesterday. We only got about 30 amps in the whole day. So the panels are out this morning, we're getting about six, six amp hours at the moment, um, or six amps per hour, which is fairly decent. Let's check here. Uh, at the moment I'm getting four. Four amps at the time of the morning. Anyway, so there's one thing that really I've just been super impressed with, and it's from a company called Maxcons. It's these guy ropes. Max Cons is a, there you can see the wind, check out this guy. Right? This thing, it doesn't have the best design, it's triangular and it really doesn't have much support. 
and the only reason it's really staying up is because of these Maxcon's products. So Maxcon's South African company, they make guy ropes and they were the original designer of these uh, spring-loaded pegs over here. Um, they come up with this with this concept, which is several other companies do knockoffs nowadays. These are the original manufacturers. So basically, you've got an incredibly strong peg. Um, this is like eight mil steel stainless steel. It's guaranteed not to bend. If it bends, they will replace it. I have not been able to bend one. I've smashed these things through the concrete. Check the damage they've done to the hammer. It's popped out. These oaks are still perfect. But the real genius lies in the spring design of this carabiner here. And it's a double ended spring, right? So if you put tension on it, it compresses and lets the, see that? It lets the guy rope out. Now, there are two per guy rope, right? So you've got one guy rope running up here to this bracket. Then it runs down here. And I've got to connect to another one of their products, the, the um, tree strap. But you just obviously normally go down to another peg. And again, that one is loaded too. So the idea is that you load both of them halfway. And that spring tension allows the pole to move slightly, right? So I can yank it like this. And nothing's going to pop out the ground. And just its efficiency is absolutely, really is remarkable. Um, Here's a good illustration. We've got two on the ground here, right? You can see them both there. This thing yesterday was bearing the brunt of all the wind. I'm rocking on this right now, and you can see how they just accommodated it. It's just absolutely brilliant. Something else they do are these tree straps. So if you're close to a tree like this, uh, we're obviously getting a guy up on the floor would be difficult. It's just a nice uh, strap around the tree will protect the tree. So there's no need to put any nails or anything in, which you see almost everywhere. Again, to the spring and then to the carabiner, see the guy rope here. Yeah, I've just been tickled pink with these, honestly. If you want to invest in one little thing that doesn't cost a fortune, that's going to change the way you camp, it's this setup here. And check out this troopy that I've had my eye on all this. Beautiful troopy there. They've done a Hercules conversion on the roof. Another product that they've got here is this uh, storm strap. So this goes over the, the, the canvas, right? Big thick strap. Goes down to the super peg, the peg to beat all pegs, which is this oaky down here. He's big, but this oak is like 50 centimeters long, something stupid. And then again to another peg on a tension and that just holds the canvas down and doesn't allow it to balloon off. So yeah, Maxcons, really, really, really impressive product, doesn't cost a fortune. Um, and I'm not too sure why we didn't buy these years back instead of struggling with the standard stupid pegs and guy ropes that you get. Um, they make those standard shiny chrome ones that you get with a tent look really stupid something else to also do are these here to mount your ground sheet to the floor uh, again made out of stainless steel obviously quite a bit thinner gauge because they don't need to be as thick and they do quite a large range of really really cool products and guess what available on blackoverland.co.za you can pick them up from us Right, I'm going to have a coffee now and enjoy this beautiful morning without any clouds, which is unfortunately our last morning in the Khalakhadi because tomorrow we leave to drive to Kalahari Rest Lodge and then south to the bottom of the continent, eh Toya? Yes, to the end of South Africa. It's now quarter past 12 in the afternoon and Toya's still sleeping. I'm joking, it's not, it's still fairly early. Okay, coffee time. Coffee time and then Toya's going to get up because she's got some chores that she has to do. She has to wash the dishes and sweep the floor and pick up all the sticks around camp, wash my underpants, generally wait on me hand and foot and that's how she earns her keep.
Guys have you noticed how the Cape Turtle Dove says Botswana? Botswana, Botswana. Eating a different noise right now. Did you guys get it? Mm -hmm. 